everyone. Surprise, surprise, it's me, Pam, back for another Floss Tube video. Um, this is going to be a regular update. I'm going to walk you through some of my pieces I've been working on. I'm currently sitting on the floor in my living room. Um, it seems to be one of the quieter rooms in the house at the moment. I've got construction going on on the street in front of my house. You're probably going to hear the trucks backing up. I can't do anything about that. And I've got a neighbor who's <laughs> mowing and cutting grass next door, um, which I can hear from the back of the house. So I don't know. We're going to, we're going to roll with it. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful day today. It's absolutely gorgeous out. We've had some pretty nasty weather this week, but all things considered, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice day. I'm just back from physiotherapy. I, a uh, little bit of a life update. Um, super busy at work, coming into the summer season. Um, I injured my back. Uh, it would appear that I actually, I initially injured it last September and I thought it got better. And then since Christmas, I've noticed um, my lower right side of my back getting worse and worse. And it turns out it's my SI joint. So, um, sitting for long periods of time is not conducive to helping that. Standing for uh, long periods of time is not helping it. Um, I need a little bit of movement, a little bit of sitting in between, that kind of thing. And I've started going to physiotherapy to try and fix it. Um, I'm at the point now where the muscles are all tense because they're trying to support the joint. And now that we're relaxing the muscles, my pelvis is actually, the SI joint is actually popping like it's it's not moving like it's supposed to. Anyway, I don't know. It's a whole story. Um, I just have to put up with it. I'm back to work next week. I'm currently on vacation. Um, weather hasn't been great to do anything outside, so I started gutting my craft room, which desperately needed it. So there's my little life update. Let's get to the stitching, which is the reason you're all here. I have some knitting to talk about and I have some stitching to talk about. So let's start with the knitting and get that out of the way. I think since I saw you last, I completed a pair of socks. I think this, this pair was in uh, progress the last time I showed them. So they are now done. Um, this is the super simple cuff down sock by Louise Patterson and um, love the design, um, love the yarn. This is just sock yarn that I got from Michaels. It's called a perfect pair. And I think the colorway is river. I could be mistaken. So I just need to sew in the um, couple ends on the cuffs and they are done. All done. Second uh, knitting project I'm working on is my sister's sweater. She wanted me to knit her a Jessica Fletcher style sweater as well. And here it is. So this is the back of the sweater and I'm up to, I guess, the armpit, you know, where you would separate for the sleeves there on the, so the band is done, all of this is done. The large fish is done except for the tip of his tail. This one is done. So I've just started the bottom. There's another fish like this up here. Um, and then it just comes in for the neckline and the shoulders. So I'm going to work on that. It's been crumpled up in my knitting bag now. I haven't touched this in a couple of weeks um, 
to be honest. So I need to get that back out and work on that for her. I wanna try and have it done for her for the fall. So gotta start making that a little bit more of a priority. Um, that is being knit in a bulky weight yarn also that I got from Michael's, um, just wash and wear acrylic yarn. Okay, now let's talk finishes. I believe in my last floss tube update, I did show you Folk Witch. Well, she has now been washed and pressed, although I just had her folded up because I took her down to the post office to see um, about the pricing um, to send it back to Jay overseas. But here she is in all of her glory, washed and done. Um, that's the best way to show this, there we go. No more grid lines, those grid lines are all gone out of the fabric. I didn't have any trouble getting those out. Um, what I did was I put this in hot water rather than tepid, lukewarm water. Um, the hotter the water is, the easier the grid lines come out apparently. So as you can see, they are completely gone. So for anyone who has any concerns about grid lines on this fabric when you get it. And I'm not sure if this is Easy Count or Easy Guide. I don't know the name of the fabric. I just know it was a 25 count piece that came in this kit from Gecko Rouge. So she is all finished. Um, I had someone ask me about this piece on my last video or on one of my crime videos. So I'll just talk a little bit about it. Um, Jay is a stitcher in um, England and um, she had purchased this kit to do uh, as a full coverage piece. I don't think she had attempted a full coverage design before. Anyway, she bought the kit. Um, she attempted to start it on her own and had made some mistakes with it, um, was having difficulty with it. I think she ripped it out and attempted a restart and again, messed something up or mixed up something with the stitches. She wasn't confident in her ability to be able to do the piece. Um, she also was going through some pretty horrendous uh, health issues at the time. And she had done a floss tube video, I think, just asking if anyone would be interested in maybe starting it for her uh, to get her off on the right foot and then send it back. Um, Michelle uh, Bendy Stitchy offered to do that for her. And I jumped on the bandwagon and I af actually offered to stitch the entire piece. Um, I mean, she had so many things going on with her health and stuff. Um, I love doing full coverage designs. Um, you know, and I love big pieces like go big or go home is a kind of my motto. I'll tackle anything. <laughs> so I, I offered to stitch it for her and send it back to her when it was complete. Um, so she boxed it up and sent it to Michelle. Michelle got it started and had started it here in the center, um, in the center of the piece and mailed it to me and I carried on and finished the entire piece. It's over a hundred thousand stitches. I think it's a hundred and eighty something thousand or a hundred and eighteen thousand. I can't remember. It, it's a lot of stitches. 25 count over one using one strand of floss. And just look at that face. How gorgeous is that? Love, love, love that. Anyway, it's now finished and I've been in contact with Jay this whole time and I'm very happy to be sending this back to her. As a matter of fact, by the time you guys see this um, message or see this floss tube video, this will be on its way across the pond. 
So it will be going back to England. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to fold it up and mail it back to her. Oh, and for anyone who's interested, um, this is the back of the piece. There you go. Because I know some people like to see the backs on full coverage designs as well. They tend to be a bit more messy than your average um, cross stitch because of the amount of confetti and the color changes. But there you go. That's the back. Okay, so I am going to um, post this off and it will be on its way by the time this video is uploaded. Now, I had another surprise finish. Um, I had started a piece for my birthday a few years ago. It's the Pat Rogers Tapestry Sampler. And I would just been working on it piecemeal here and there. Then when I took some time off work last week with my back and I was relaxing, I said, I'm gonna concentrate on that. I might be able to get a finish in. And sure enough, Bob's your uncle and it's all done. This has not been washed or um, pressed or anything like that. I just took it out of the hoop and this is it. So this is the Pat Rogers Tapestry Sampler. It is no longer available. This is a chart that um, the lighting in here is not great because of where my window is situated, but um, it's really, really pretty colors. So this chart is no longer available. It's a discontinued chart. Um, it's no longer in print. Um, I've had people ask me about it. Um, it's already, I've already promised this to Allie of Allie Stitching Studio. So now that I have it done, this is, um, chart is gonna get put in the mail to Allie and she can enjoy it as well. I had someone uh, mention to me last week that they had been looking for it for quite some time and had finally found a copy of it. So there are copies of this around. It is hard to get, but you might luck into a stitcher who, like me, has finished it and wants to pass the stash. So this now needs uh, a wash and a press, and a frame. There we go. And for anyone who wants to see the back of that, that is the back side. Again, I don't think you can see that really well, but some people like to see the backs of cross stitch, so there you go. So that's my two finishes. Um, very pleased with them. Because I finished Folk Witch, I decided I was gonna give myself a treat and I would get a new start. And Allie had posted me the, oh shoot, I left the chart downstairs. The Winchester Mystery Mansion. Um, anyway. It's a, oh my gosh, I have to think of her name. It's gone right out of my head. Debbie Patrick. It's a Debbie Patrick design. She's very well known for um, her design work for um, Victorian and famous houses. Architecture is her jam. She does beautiful, beautiful charts um again older designer and um but you can still get her charts i believe so i did start the winchester mystery mansion i'm doing it on 18 count ada and this was where i got with it just started in the middle and i'm going to work my way out The thing with her charts, um, they are extremely, extremely detailed. And there is a lot of um, design 
techniques that she uses um, using shading um, and changing of colors. So there are a lot of color changes. There's also a lot of backstitching. So be forewarned, backstitch as you go. So I'm doing a section in the center of the chart right now. And as soon as I get that finished, I'm gonna backstitch that before I move on um, to the next section of the chart. Because to sit down and do hours and hours and hours of just backstitching, I'll, I'll disown the piece, it will never be finished. Um, so that was my new start for after I finished Folk Witch. Because I tend to do a little bit of a rotation with my designs, what I decided to do, Folk Witch was the full coverage piece I was um, focusing on. And I would do a week on Folk Witch and then do a week on something else, a week on Folk Witch, a week on something else. Well, the next full coverage that I'm going to focus on is Roast About by Elvis Presley. I'll insert a picture. Um, this is a kit that Allie got through Mystic Stitch. It is a paper copy of the chart. I can't get the PDF version because the chart doesn't exist anymore. Mystic Stitch does not have it, it's discontinued. So because I don't have a PDF of it, I can't work on it in Pattern Keeper. That's fine, I'll, I'm just using the regular paper chart and coloring it off as I'm going to make sure I'm not missing any of my stitches. But because of that, I had started to go back to parking and it's driving me insane. So now I'm doing, um, I'm doing, I'm, I'm stitching in columns, staggered columns, uh, so I don't get grid lines in my, in my piece, but I'm finishing off my threads as I go. So if it continues on to the next page, then I continue on to the next page and end my thread where I can, instead of leaving it hanging and parked. So this is where it is now. Um, I'm stitching this piece for my mama. So this is Elvis's big fat head. <laughs> Anytime you see this on Instagram and you see me saying something about Elvis's big head, this is what I'm talking about. This is the full size of the piece. You can see where the stitching, oh wait now, because of the lighting you can't. You can see where the stitching ends here on this side and where it ends on this side. So that's the full size of it. And it's fairly long. And so you've got his head, his silhouette on this side, bust or whatever you want to call that. And then he's standing up in a smaller version of himself over here. So I have managed to do quite a bit of work with his hair. Um, I've gotten an ear. <laughs> and now I'm working across uh, into his face. So my, my plan is to work across this way. When I get over here, I'm going to start working in these parked threads and work my way down. So the last time I picked it up, I wanted to get to the other side of the piece just to make sure that um, I was interested to see how much further it was across the page. And I did that and then I went back and started working. So I'm going to work across here now. And as you can see, I don't have any parked threads on this side. These were parked from previous. so. I'm gonna work these in now as I'm going and I'm just finishing my threads as I come down. And so like the page break is about here and I'm just working my way down until my thread runs out and ending the stitch. So there you go. That's Elvis in all his glory. He's being stitched on 18 count white Ada. So it's gonna be like a poster size piece um, that my mom can put up in her house next to her jukebox. And because I finished my Pat Rogers tapestry sampler, um, not only because I finished that, because I've got, God knows I've got enough projects to work on, but, um, for those of you who have been watching me for a long time, 
you know that uh, I guess all the years that I've been on a floss tube, I had a little stitching buddy, um, little Maggie, um, my little Pomeranian Terrier mix, and she passed away last year. It's actually gonna be a year on Saturday that she's gone. So I have a picture of her and I have her paw print in a um, little shadow box that I got from the um, vet. And I wanted to do this Lizzie Kate design, uh, dog lessons for people. And I figured seeing how I finished tapestry sampler, this would be a good time to start this. Um, I'd like to get this done and get it hung up on the wall with her paw print um, downstairs with her little picture. And I have another dog design um, that I'm gonna stitch and do the same thing with the picture, the painting we have of Lulu, our boxer. Um, again, 2020 was a horrible year for us. I lost Maggie in July, and then we lost uh, our boxer, Lulu, uh, she passed in December, just a couple of weeks before Christmas. So it was a rough year. <laughs> Pandemic, um, no pets in the house anymore. It's, it's, it's been a lot to take in this year. So I coffee tea dyed some 28 count Monaco that I had. Um, I didn't have anything that was kind of linen looking. I wanted something reminiscent of the color of this chart. And so I just, I put this in the oven. I, I did put a, I did put a little uh, video up on my Instagram showing how I coffee tea dye. I think it's pretty much the same way that most people do. I put tea bags and I make up a packet of coffee. Like I take a coffee filter and just put coffee grounds in it twisty tie the top of it so it's like a little packet. I throw it into a pot of water, bring it to a boil. I let it simmer for about 20 or 30 minutes. Take the tea bags out, take my material, crumple it all up, throw it in the pot, let this simmer in the pot for about 30 minutes till it gets a nice color. Then I just take it out and crumple it all up on a cookie sheet um, make sure the edges of your fabric are kind of, are kind of tucked under when you're crumpling it because you're going to put it in the oven. That's why it's going on a cookie sheet, a baking sheet. And then you put it in the oven on 200 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. I mean, you can use 150 if you want. You can bump it up to 250 maybe. I don't know, 225, but I like 200. It's not too hot. It's hot enough to kind of bake the fabric and dry the fabric with the coffee in it, but it's not hot enough to burn. Um, so you leave it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. As you can see where it was on the thing, I did get it. You do get a couple of like scorchy sort of marks, but I think that just adds to the interest of it. Whoops, that was my needle minder. All right, and this is what it looks like when I took it out. I also don't rinse my fabric before I put it in the oven. So what I did with this was I coffee dyed it in the pot. I took it right out of that water, crumpled it up on the cookie sheet, put it in the oven. After it came out of the oven, I then um, ran it under some cool water just to give it a little rinse. No coffee came out of it, no tea came out of it, the water ran clear. And then what I did was I pressed it, although you would never know that now, but there you go. So I had a little tiny start on this piece. That is the start of a little paw print up there, which is this little motif. And I'm gonna work on that and get that done at some point in the future. So I've been having a little bit of trouble sitting in my stitching chair because of my back. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been sitting on a hard chair upstairs in the house during the day, um, doing some stitching and then doing my exercises that I'm supposed to do for physio. 
um, going for my light walks, that sort of thing. And then in the nighttime, I've been going downstairs and I'll sit with stitching for an hour or so downstairs on the sofa with hubby before we go to bed. So um, I have this on my, Elvis on my Lowry stand upstairs that I work on during the day. And I have a stitching project downstairs that I can work on in the evenings. I hope that um, everyone is doing well. I hope that you're getting some stitching in and enjoying some semblance of summer. Our summer has been non-existent. Well, I mean, we had a good week and then we hit bad weather. Um, looks like we've got a couple of good days and then we've got a tropical storm that's supposed to be coming through. So um, who knows what it's gonna be like, it, it, you know. It's either nice or it isn't. <laughs> um, that's about it. Uh, that's everything from me. During the summer, I will continue to upload my coffee, crime, and craft videos. I took a little break the last couple of weeks with everything that's been going on with my back and, and that sort of thing, but I will have a video up on Friday. I have one ready to go, and I already have a topic and half of the episode's um, notes written up for the next episode. So next Friday will be a coffee, crime, and craft video. Until then, I hope everyone's having a fabulous summer so far. I hope you're getting some stitching and crafting in, and we'll chat with you again soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.